Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Family Sedan Channel. The second largest bank collapse in the history of the United States just happened yesterday on Friday. And I, I was covering everything that had led up to that point in a video yesterday, but oh, there's more to say today. This is heavily impacting uh, the, the crypto in general. And also David Schwartz, who is Ripple's CTO, and of course, uh, co-creator of XRP and the XRP Ledger, uh, when asked, uh, you know, does Ripple have any exposure to this bank, which is Silicon Valley Bank? Does Ripple have any exposure to this? And David Schwartz stated that uh, Ripple's going to be releasing a, a statement on this issue and that he couldn't talk about it any further. I'll show you his exact tweet a little bit later in the video, but that was the message. And that's kind of curious. Um, you know, if they do, because mind you, and I just to be clear at the outset of the video, I'll explain why this is potentially a big deal. And you know, since we don't have sufficient facts, maybe, maybe it won't be. We've got to hear from Ripple first. But mind you that last time anyone from Ripple cited how much money Ripple has in the bank. It was it was Brad Garlinghouse. It may have been over a year ago at this point. I don't remember exactly when, but he stated publicly that Ripple had $1 billion with a B in the bank. Which bank? Or is it multiple banks? Now that we don't know, and this matters because this bank went kaput. They are no more. The federal government has taken over Silicon Valley Bank uh, on, on Friday. And it's a big problem. So I'm going to break it all down for you. And we've seen some crazy stuff with uh, with some stable coins as a result of all of this, too. And I'll explain. But before going further, I do want to be clear. I do not have a financial background of any kind. I am not offering financial advice. And you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. All right, so let's let's make sure everybody's caught up on, on the fundamentals, the things that you absolutely must know, and I'm going to try and get through this as concisely as possible to not belabor the point, especially since some of this I talked about literally yesterday, but here's what you must know. A Silicon Valley Bank, uh, it, it, which failed literally yesterday on Friday, it's, it's Saturday morning as I'm recording this video, it's, uh, what time is it, 5.09 a.m. Central Standard Time, that's the time zone that I'm in anyway. Um, well, they failed, and why did they fail? Well, First of all, you got to understand what fractional reserve banking is. Fractional, fractional reserve banking is is the unfortunately the monetary system embraced in the United States, and not only in the United States. So what I'm about to describe to you is legal. What I'm about, it's like this is just how banks work, and it's kind of bonkers, but this is how banks work. It's truly a trust system. Um, without trust, everything just falls apart, and you end up having bank runs. So with a frac fractional reserve banking, when you say you deposit you know, uh, $100 into a bank, uh, the bank only has to keep 10% of that on hand. They can loan out the other 90%. So they can loan that out or they can invest in things like T-bills. And, and and so in the case of Silicon Valley Bank, what they did actually, not that they loaned out every, you know, 90% of the deposits that they took in, um, they did loan out, you know, some of the money that came in, obviously, and poof, new money into existence effectively. But uh, But what they did, and this is what ultimately absolutely destroyed them, is they invested in a bunch of government bonds at a very low interest rate. I can't remember, it might have been like 1%, 1.2%, something like that. But that was back before the government started engaging in rate hikes. So the, the, the United States federal government, as, as I'm sure pretty much all of you are aware to this point, uh, for you know roughly a year or so, I can't remember the first hike was, but roughly a year, been increasing interest rates. And so, you know, the amount that uh, is going to be paid out at that lower interest rate versus what you could, you, you know, uh, uh, you know, government bonds would pay out now, a big disparity there. You see, so you can see right there, there's already an obvious problem in terms of the gap. Now, in theory, it wouldn't necessarily be a problem because if you just hold the bonds through the term that you, you assign to contractually, which it may have been, um, I'm pulling from memory here, but it might have been like a four-year term that, that Silicon uh, Valley Bank signed. Um, if, if you hold it through that, then okay, you've, you've got it and the funds are there. But what about in a world where the interest rates are much higher? And this is where you have a problem if you have a bank run, which is what happened. Now, why did Silicon Valley Bank have a bank run? Well, they had a bank run because this, is, this isn't just your ordinary bank. So this is a bank that um, caters heavily, as I was mentioning yesterday in a video, they cater heavily to the tech sector. I mean, they are Silicon Valley Bank. This will surprise no one, right? So they cater heavily to that crowd. And tech sector ain't been doing so hot. I don't know if you've been following that, but tech sector not been doing so hot. And so all sorts of businesses 
were kind of scaling back, taking money out. And it got to the point where um, the bank couldn't cover withdrawals and not because they did anything illegal. No, no, no. They, they operated within the law. So far as I've seen, if they did anything illegal, then somebody point me to that news. I've seen nothing on that. It looks to me like they followed the letter of the law as it pertains to fractional reserve banking, but that's a big risk when you're talking about putting that much customer funds because it's hinging on, you're counting on people uh, you know, in the tech sector, your customers, not wanting tremendous amounts of money back and the government not raising interest rates, which they did. So that didn't go well. That's why we ended up in the position that we're in right now. Well, they ended up in the position that they're in. But why, why might this impact uh, Ripple? Well, it depends. It, it does, will it, won't it? Well, let's wait until we see Ripple statement. I can't say for sure, but here's what you need to be aware of. In the United States, there's something called the FDIC, which insures deposits um, up to $250,000. And so for a typical individual, individual, most people won't have that much money in your bank. And so great, you're actually covered. And that's fantastic. I don't know exactly how long it would take, you know, for you to, to get the funds back. But the point is, you would actually be covered. And so you should be able to sleep easy. But you, you, I saw a figure and it was something like 97% of deposits would not be covered by the FDIC. They're not insured. 97%. And why? Because they'd be over that $250,000 threshold. You're talking about businesses in the tech sector. So what do you do if you're a business, your bank is now insolvent and you can't operate? What happens? And so to what degree is that going to ripple out throughout the economy? That's a whole different can of worms. Like that's a whole different conversation right there. Um, but only in part, because that brings us back to Ripple. If Ripple has a substantial amount of holdings in the bank, they are going to have a bad day. they are going to have a bad month. they are going to have a bad year. No, I'm not saying that they do. Maybe we'll find out that they had little... A uh, little in there or nothing. Although if, if the answer is nothing, I don't know why they're even putting out a statement. That's why I'm hazarding a guess, and it is just a guess, but I'm hazarding a guess that they have some amount of money uh, in that bank. And so imagine it's millions and millions and millions, and then like you're guaranteed 250000 that's it, and you're a business. Again, 97% of deposits roughly, that's a figure I saw, not covered. That's what's being reported by the mainstream media. That doesn't sound good. So I don't know what's going to happen and I'm not, I'm not saying, hey, be alarmed, you know, ripple screw. I'm not saying anything like that. I'm saying literally just the facts that we know that there's going to be a statement from Ripple. We don't know what's going to be cited in that statement. And just, you know, noting that should it be the case that they had a billion dollars in the bank uh, at, at Silicon Valley Bank, that's really bad. That's tremendously bad. Now, I'm, I, I, I'm not even speculating that they do. I'm just stating the obvious so you can understand the concern here. I just want to make sure that everybody understands what's going on here. And this has been tremendously negatively impacting uh, the, the crypto space. Uh, I mean, I'm sure if you've been looking at, uh, you know, just crypto in general, it's been all over the place, mostly down over the last several days or so for various reasons. <clears throat> now, as it pertains specifically to uh, what's happening with the stable coins, oh, let's talk about this a little bit too, because this is just... Uh, it's just insane. So uh, USDC, um, which again is allegedly 100% backed. And I say allegedly because, I, look, I don't have any reason to believe that it's not 100% backed. They've also not proven that it's 100% backed. Same, same with Tether. They've never had that level of transparency. So it's just like, oh, no, I guess they're telling the truth. Uh, but you know what we did find out? We found out that uh, USDC... Um, a lot of a portion of that back, and I think it came out to around eight percent ish of the the total. Uh, turns out that uh, that was backed by money that is it, that is in Silicon Valley Bank, which just failed. Kid you not. So <laughs> the bank goes belly up, uh, and then USDC starts tanking. And here, let me pull up. I'm going to pull up USDC on um, actually on Coin Market Cap because. Earlier, maybe they fixed the problem now, but what, but a couple hours ago when I was mapping out content for this video, I checked on LifeCoin Watch and it wasn't reporting accurate numbers, so I just pulled up Coin Market Cap, which I don't normally do. I don't like their website as much. I don't like the the, the background. They have all sorts of fact uh, figures that I like to look at regularly. Where I have to scroll down. It's just annoying. I don't, I don't like the layout. But anyway, um, so the twenty four hour low for USDC, which is a stable coin, which is supposed to be one dollar, got down to eighty seven cents. 87 cents, folks. Uh, that's some panic stuff right there. And it's currently, at the time of recording this, at 91 cents. This is no good. Um, now, DAI, another stable coin, 
which I don't pretend to know a ton about, but I did learn today that a DAI is in part, or, or largely are in part, uh, backed by USDC. How about that? A stable coin backed by a stable coin, which is backed by the dollar, which is in a bank that's insolvent? That's a fun time. So anyway, <laughs> can you believe this is real life? So DAI, and by the way, the reason I don't know a ton about these stable coins is I don't use them. I've never used a stable coin. I'm a dude that doesn't trade. So people that are more likely to trade, they, I can see why they'd use them. But for me, I buy stuff and then I put it in cold storage. That's it. So I have no personal experience with stable coins. If I can avoid using them for the rest of my life, I'm going to do that. Um, there might be a reason I'll use them in the future, but eh, maybe for something real short term, but I, I don't like them. I really don't like them. I don't feel safe with them. I like cold storage. So anyway, uh, DAI is also it lost its peg. So you've got USDC and the stablecoin DAI, which they're both depegged. It's currently at 94 cents and it didn't go quite as low. I don't think it got that. Yeah, it got down to 89 cents. And I'm not convinced that this is the end of the world necessarily for USDC, but we also don't have all the facts, so I can't say that definitively either. All I can say is that it's an S-word show. It is an absolute mess out there. Um, and now Tether's reaping the benefit. Who would have thought that Tether would be perceived as the safer <laughs> stable coin when compared to USDC? Who would have seen that coming just like half a, you know, half a week ago? Um, so Tether's currently at $1.01. It was as high um, as $1.03. So as USDC was going down... Tether was going up because Tether became viewed as the safer bet. So it, it is what it is, man. I just, what do we even do? What a freaking mess here. Um, and you can see, I, I, for those of you that care to look, I'm going to pull up th this article from the Daily Mail, and it's got some pictures. And you can see here's Silicon Valley Bank, and there's just this line of, of customers trying to get their funds out. So there's one picture. Let me scroll down. There's some more here. Apparently, it wrapped around the block. From, that's what's being reported anyway. There's a video, I think, coming up in a second here from like a, it might have been on Twitter that they embedded here. But it's just a ton of customers trying to uh, get, uh, might need to fit auto play. here I can hit play. I don't know if it's going to do sound though. Uh, yeah. So you can see here, it's just like a ton of people. Like, I just, I feel for them. I mean, can you imagine if this happened to you? That's devastating. What if that's everything that you have in a bank? So... Wow. And it's just crazy. And so this, in theory, could happen to any bank, but it, it was more risky for Silicon Valley Bank because they they cater heavily to a specific sector, the tech sector. So if you have a, like a more, if, if you have a customer base that more, you know, um, is more of a tapestry of like what composes the entire United States economy, then this wouldn't be happening to you, but they cater specifically to the tech sector, which is having a hard time at the exact same time that interest rates are going up and they've got this money locked in government bonds. So then what are you going to do? Like, you're just, you're completely screwed at that point. And, and now the federal government has taken over Silicon Valley bank all happened in a day. I mean, there were there, the stories technically started Wednesday when, uh, you know, there's you know, cracks in the foundation, if you will. But uh, it, it's all quickly like snap of finger, you know, <laughs> Friday rolls around insolvency and and that that's all she wrote so that's that's some ridiculous stuff um and then there was also this so this was from circle this is at 5 50 p.m in the evening yesterday um and this is part of what set off some of the scare stuff here um circle tweeted out silicon valley bank is one of six banking partners circle uses for managing the 25 percent portion of usdc reserves held in cash while we await clarity on how the FDIC receivership of SVB will impact its depositors, Circle and USDC continue to operate normally. Uh, yeah, so that led to Attorney John Deaton retweeted that and he said, I'm sorry, but this is not a confidence-inspiring statement. <laughs> no, that's for damn sure. Um, then David Schwartz also retweeted that, that tweet from Circle. David Schwartz said, uh, great, quick question though. Are you solvent? Which is a good question, and um, not not looking not looking like there's a, a <laughs> it's not looking like they're solvent, right? And then somebody asked him, "Does Ripple have any exposure?" And this is where David Schwartz said, "We're going to issue a statement. I can't really say anything until we do that officially." Okay, so I hope if. Ripple does have any exposure, which I'm, again, I'm hazarding a guess. I don't know, but as I'm hazarding a guess they have at least some exposure or else why even put out a statement? I'm hoping that it's extremely minimal. I mean, you know, like they had exposure to FTX too, but it was also almost nothing compared to, 
you know, the totality of what the company's worth. It was like a rounding error, effectively. I can't remember if it was like ten or twelve million dollars worth of XRP at the time. It was, it was something that's big to a normal person, but for a company of that size, it's nothing. It's a rounding error. So, it it just this is the this is the situation we find ourselves in. That's it. Uh, so. I don't know. As soon as we find out what it is, I'll be happy to put out a video as quickly as I can covering what this statement is. I'm hoping it's good news. I'm optimistic for that. But can you imagine the disaster scenario where all of that, all of that ends up, you know, that billion dollars that they have, uh, all of that is what? what what's what's going to happen? Because my understanding is that um, even if it's not all lost, given that the, the bank is shut down, sorting out and getting your money back. So you probably, first of all, you probably don't get all of it back. But even if you do, uh, my understanding is that could take like three or four years. Like, so what do you do if you're a company in the meantime? That's the question. It's like, what would you do? Uh, I guess go out of business. I mean, you can try and scale back, but to what degree can you even do that? So that's why, again, I'm hoping that that's not the case. But, and I, look, I'd be surprised if it is. So I'm not like, I'm just trying to be very factual or like laying out the facts, not to scare anybody whatsoever. But um, that's potentially, in a worst case scenario, what we're looking at. I'm, I, it's not that I think that we have the worst case scenario. I'm not. I'm not even predicting that. But uh, this this is what we're working with at this particular moment. Uh, crazy stuff here, folks. So that's the update for now. I'll keep you posted as things continue to unfold. But wow, I just keep. I can't. I can't help but wonder what's going to happen with USDC. Now, presumably, at some point, it's going to get repegged. I hope. Because it, look, the only way that this thing completely unravels, because this is this is equivalent to a bank run. This is people trying to get out of USDC, and that's driving down the price. And the only way that this would actually completely fail is is if if enough people pull out, where you finally get to the point where somebody actually can't pull out. So like, don't forget there was a bank run on Binance in December, but bank runs don't always result in failure. If there's if, if the assets are there and people can retrieve them when they want, then eventually the panic subsides and then it just goes back to normal and funds even flow back in. So when it comes to Circle, if it's truly backed and if people, if, if 100% of people at any moment truly can get their money out, then, then good. But that's kind of questionable given that something like 8%, I think it's 8% ish of what backs USDC is, is held by the Silicon Valley Bank. So you can see where the fear is coming from for sure. It's pretty obvious to see that for, for USDC and DAI, but... Is it actually going to be the end of the world for, for the coin? I'm not going to predict that. I don't know. I hope not. I don't, I don't like to see these collapses. And, and in that case, assuming they are completely backed, which, again, they refuse to prove, which I just makes me not trust them. But if even if they are 100% backed, this isn't really their fault. You know, this is the bank making a bad bet. So And, and even if the bank didn't break any laws, that was a big risk what they did with the government bonds. I just... All right, I'll stop yammering on. You guys let me know what you think, but that's the update. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the Moon Family Sedan.